What up, peeps? Tony Baker here, back for another movie thing. This is not a review. A lot of you, I have yet, since I've been doing the movie reviews, I have yet to give anything five saxophone. For me, a five saxophone movie needs time. Um, it depends on rewatchability. How do I like it with repeated viewings? Does it hold up? Do I watch it every time I come across it? Do I want to see it again and again? That's a five saxophone movie to me. A lot of times when I see something new, I'm like, yo, that was really good. If I watch it the second time, does it go down? Does it go up? Do I want to see it again? So, and a lot of you ask, what would you give five saxophones to? Well, I'm gonna give you 10 right here. This is in any order. These are 10 movies, and there's more. I'm gonna just give you 10 right now that I've given five saxophones to. Number 10, Lord of the Rings. I just lumped them all into one. The first one, I probably watched the most out of the trilogy um, because when it got on video, I bought the DVD. I bought the, I bought the D, I bought the director's cut. Cause when they came out with the director's cut of Lord of the Rings, there was actually like 30 more minutes of movie. So it was worth every penny. I just thought the movies were extremely well done. The acting was perfect. The characters were great. The visuals were great. Some of the special effects I look at now, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. Like some of the stuff Legolas was doing was like really, you know. And the action was dope. The action mattered. Uh, the whole quest mattered. I was like, yo, this is. And it took me to another world. Like I, I felt like I was somewhere else. Like for for three years, I was going somewhere else at the movie theater, and I loved every piece of it. So that's a five saxophone trilogy right there. Lord of the Rings by Peter Jackson. And here's the thing, like Lord of the Rings was so, like I was excited about the Hobbit series. Here's, here's one thing I deflated on about the Hobbits. The thing I didn't like about the Hobbit was everybody was little. Everybody, the whole squad was little. I don't know what, it just took me out of it a little bit, action-wise. Everybody was little. Hobbits aren't action people. Like when you see a Hobbit fighting, you're not really like, you're just kind of like, oh, okay, oh. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like a dwarf looks more solid and rugged. Okay, the dwarf. But like the whole crew just didn't have that, that rugged edge. Like, you know, the dwarf in Lord of the Rings, he had that rugged edge. She was like, yo, he was dope with the ax. He's like, yeah, my ax was like, I feel like they didn't have any of that in the Hobbit movies. And the special effects in the Hobbit were worse than Lord of the Rings. They should have been better. I don't know what it was, it just didn't. The Hobbits were good. They were good, but they were nowhere near as good as Lord of the Rings. I don't know what it was. But anyway, number nine, and again, this countdown is not in order. I'm just counting down because I just do countdowns. Uh, number nine, Friday, Ice Cube and Chris Tucker. Friday is a movie I have seen 15 times minimum. Uh, it got funnier every time I watched it. It's so quotable. Almost everything in the movie is quotable. Everybody who's seen it and liked it knows the quotes. It sticks with you uh, anytime it's on. I look at it, I still laugh at it to this day. It came out in 1995, it's still funny. It's just one of my favorite movies, man. I remember watching it over and just dying laughing. The characters were memorable. The sequels never, never even came close to the magic that was the first one, which is usually the case with comedies. And it, it was just perfect, man. It was, I don't know, it just feels, it feels like a part of my life at this point. So Friday is definitely a five saxophone movie. Okay, number eight, Die Hard with Bruce Willis. Five saxophones all day, man. They have just tried to duplicate this movie, I don't know how many times with other movies, it, and it just never matches up to the original Die Hard. Bruce Willis, wrong place, wrong time. Terrorists bust up in the building, they don't know he's there, it's the perfect setup. John McClane, tough, wisecracking, getting the job done. Rated R action, body count. The villain was fantastic. Everything just worked. Everything came together perfectly. Take a TV star, put him in an action movie, and it worked. John McClane was just, oh, just a great character. Hans Gruber was just the perfect villain. Like even, even the henchmen were dope. The black smart dude that played in Walker, Texas Ranger with Chuck Norris was in there with the corny lines. The Asian dude that was in mad action movies in the 80s. He didn't really talk, but he was in there. The creepy German guy with the long hair that was just rugged. He might even been Russian. I don't know what he was, but he had long hair and he was just rugged and hard to kill. It was just perfect, man. The cool limo driver that was just cool the whole time that John connected with and came through in the clutch. Oh man, it was perfect. John's wife being tough and secretive at the same time. The dude on cocaine that was just gonna get everybody killed because he was looking out for himself. The friendly cop 
Cause also played in Family Matters, man. They just had John's back the whole way on the radio. The FBI agents that were useless. Oh. Die hard, man. Five saxophone. Number seven, coming to America with Eddie Murphy. Movie perfection, man. This movie's perfect. Perfect. They set up a world that was great. It made you want to go to Africa. Black Panther and coming to America work wonders for just Africa. You know, usually when you see Africa, you, you get depressed. You watch Blood Diamond, you watch this stuff, you're like, oh my God, how are they just... But then you see Wakanda coming to America, you just be like, you know what? Even though these are fictional places, you just you just look at it differently. Eddie Murphy was just at his peak when this came out, man. Him playing multiple characters like that flawlessly to where you didn't even notice it was Eddie Murphy. Like a couple of characters you knew it was Eddie Murphy, but they felt so different that you forget it's Eddie Murphy. And when he was the white Jewish guy in the corner playing chess, you didn't even know it was him. You didn't even know that was Eddie Murphy. It's like, oh my God. At Arsenio Hall playing multiple characters too. Everything was just flawless. The cast of characters were great. The culture, the, the picture they painted. James Earl Jones is his dad. Oh my God. James Earl Jones is just classic by itself. It's, it's a movie that I will watch anytime it's on. The dude falling down the steps to avoid paying rent is my guy. He was like, don't be pulling that falling down the stairs. Your rent's due. Uh oh. I wanted to be that character that just fell down the steps and acted like I was just dead and couldn't pay rent. We've all been there. You, We've all wanted to fall down the steps in front of our landlord to avoid this rent. Oh, coming to America, five saxophones. Number six, Terminator 2. Terminator 2, James Cameron, man. I remember when I first saw this at the movie theater, I was blown away. It gets no better than this, right? I remember looking, I think I went with my mom and my brother, I was in between them, I was just like, Who's doing this? It was just, oh my God. First of all, the first Terminator was excellent. First Terminator, there's probably five sacks. But this one, oh, the action was flawless. The, the villain, first of all, you switch the villain from the first one, you make him a good guy in the second one, and then you got another villain. That's the genius tactic right there. And then the, the whole cat and mouse with that was just perfect. I love movies where people are getting chased by one thing. I, I just love that whole premise and the thing was just, how do you kill it? Oh, it was perfect. They were getting chased the whole movie. The pacing was fast. It was just perfection. They haven't been able to match it or come where, anywhere close to this in these other Terminator movies, but Terminator 2, easily one of the best action movies ever made. It was, it was, it was one of the most expensive movies ever made at the time, and it was worth it. All that money showed, and it still holds up to this day. Five saxophones. Number five, Shawshank Redemption. This movie is just excellent. Excellent. Top to bottom, man. You love the whole story, top to bottom. And I'm an action guy. I love Shawshank Redemption. The storytelling, the narration by Morgan Freeman, Tim Robbins was the perfect, like, you know, guy that didn't do it. He just looked innocent, but at the same time, he had to build the strength to survive and, like, think of a plan to escape. It was just the perfect movie. Never knew it was by Stephen King. Doesn't even have a Stephen King bone in his body, but it is, and that just makes it even better. Cast of characters, man, just the way it was told, the way it was set up. And it didn't do crazy box office. But everybody who's seen it, I've never heard a person say, Shawshank Redemption was whack. I've never heard that, never heard it. Either they haven't seen it or it was great. There's no in between. Shawshank Redemption, five saxophone. Number four, Saving Private Ryan. The best war movie ever made, in my opinion. It made me terrified of war for the first time. Like it's like seeing what it, it might have been like in war it was just like, oh. Just the randomness of it was terrifying. Like you, you got no clue if you're gonna live or die. And then the person next to you dies, you like, you wanna mourn, but at the same time, you happy to be alive. Oh, that whole dynamic was just crazy. The cast, Tom Hanks, Giovanni Ribisi, Vin Diesel, that did, and this is before we even knew who he was. Um, who was the, okay. Edward Burns, Matt Damon, Tom Sizemore, Adam Goldberg, and uh, Barry Pepper as the sniper man. Oh, this movie was excellent. This movie was excellent top to bottom, man. 
the, everything felt real, the warm, the cinematography was fantastic. I just like how there was a team. It was a team oriented mission. They were falling off one by one. We cared about these soldiers and it was a, it was a hard watch, but it was great. I've watched it several times. Anytime I come across it, I'm gonna watch it. And this is just a, it's Steven Spielberg's best movie in my opinion. Five saxophones. Number three, and this is, this is my guilty pleasure probably compared to the other movies on this list, but Big Trouble in Little China is a five saxophone saxophone movie. When I saw this movie as a kid, it was everything I ever wanted in a movie. It was like, fant just amazing, like, comic book style characters. A funny leading character in Jack Burton, who was hilarious. Um, Cause I, I grew up a fan of karate movies. So you mix in karate movies with horror, action and comedy in one movie. I'm a kid, like this This is this is all I ever needed. I don't need anything else. It was perfect. You got dude, you got a, you got a dude that can generate lightning. One represented thunder, one represented rain. Oh, come on, it was karate moves in there. Flying around, sword fights, monsters, wisecracks. Oh, man, and Kurt Russell was perfection. He was perfect in this movie as a truck driver that didn't sign up for this. He did not sign up for any of this. All he wanted was his truck back. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Five saxophones with Big Trouble in Little China. All right, number two, Goodfellas. Martin Scorsese's these little mafia epics. All right, first of all, I know, you know, Godfather's a perfect movie as well, but Goodfellas is the one that's more rewatchable. Godfather, you gotta kinda sit down, get your popcorn, you gotta really dedicate time to Godfather. You gotta be like, all right, I'm watching The Godfather, my phone will be on silent, don't come over, don't talk to me until it's done. I need the house quiet. Can you light a candle over there? Put the incense on as well. I need these dogs to hush. Put the cat up, change the litter box, put the cats outside. I need to focus right here. Tell my mom I'll call her back, but she's in the hospital. Tell her I'll call her back, I'm watching The Godfather too, she'll understand, let me focus. Good fellas, you could just watch and do other stuff and still just feel every piece of it. You can cook and just be, yeah, Joe Pesci's crazy. You can still, anytime it's on, you could be fixing, you could be putting the garage together from scratch. Oh man, this, this good fellas is my favorite joint. You could be doing whatever. You could be mid sex, like, oh man, this is good, huh? Still watching good fellas, man. It's a movie you can rewatch and still watch while you're doing other stuff. It's perfect. The setting, the landscape. I'll talk more about Goodfellas in another video, but Goodfellas is easily a five saxophone movie. It's perfect. Number one, man, and this is like, when people ask me, what's your favorite movie? I usually say Big Trouble in Little China or this one. Aliens, the second one. James Cameron one. Man, this movie. Sigourney Weaver as Ripley is one of my favorite characters to ever grace movies. I love Ripley as a character. She's feminine, she's vulnerable, tough, smart, all of that. They don't make her overly tough. They just keep her like, you know, I'm scared, I don't wanna do this, but I'm gonna get it done just to survive. Oh, perfect character. Now she's out here with the Marines. Whenever you send a team of Marines in to do something and all hell breaks loose, that's the perfect setup. It's the perfect setup for any movie. Usually people fumble the, the landing, but when you start out with that core, we go send a team in to do this. All, all you can do is mess it up from that point on. But you start with that core and then James Cameron nailed it, man. The action, the aliens themselves are terrifying. Like this movie scared me when I was young. I was like, oh, I can't sleep after this. Cause the aliens are terrifying. The aliens don't have any personality. They're not talking. They just kill you. That's it. If they don't kill you, they impregnate you or they just hold you hostage until you get impregnated. That's all they care about. There's no, there's no getting to know them. There's no, maybe we can connect. These aren't gorillas in the wild. These are xenomorphs and they'll kill you. And then if you kill them, you might get acid blood on you and die anyway. With. Oh God, it's just, and they got extra mouth and they got tails that to kill you too. They, these things are just built for killing. Oh man, Aliens is a perfect movie. The action is so dope. People falling off one by one. Oh man. And you got the slimy sleazeball, ulterior motive dude in the group. You got the tough guys, you got the wisecracking guy. You got the quiet, cool guy that might live to the end, but he might not. And you got the black dudes dying early, which is, you know, Typical of the 80s movies, we always died in the first assault. Aliens is no exception. But still, nonetheless, it's a five saxophone movie, man. So there we go, man. Y'all wanted to know, these are 10 movies, well, you know, 12 if you count all three Lord of the Rings, that I give five saxophones to, man. Let me know if you wanna see more in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought about my picks in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and as usual, we out here.